15. It's a Saturday. So I got to do a little rummage selling today. So I thought every week I go rummage selling and actually find stuff. I might post a video on my YouTube channel, Lady Taka, um, showing you what I found. And this week it's a lot of books because I went to a book sale and today was bag sale day. And so for $2 a grocery bag, you could just fill jam pack. So there'll be a lot of books to go through. The first thing I found today for, uh, he was priced at 25 cents. I ended up paying 20 cents because that was all the change dad and I had. Um, early rummage sale season, you know. Uh, so there's this really cute little Chewbacca toy and it says on here that it's from Star Wars Episode 3 and obviously Burger King Corporations means this came in a kids meal at one point but his face just made me so happy today I mean look at that the cute little detail of the blue eyes so that was my first cool find today other than books um, dad found something cool and um, my influence on him is now evident um, he collects village houses and he found this today for two dollars which is according to the box a haunted house one and so you can see there's Jack Larens on there. It's not as colorful as he normally likes, but it was such a good deal. And I like there's little details like black cat in the window and hole in the roof in the back where you won't see that often. Every window has some details like a spider. And look, the uh, bat weather vane even stayed with it. So um, what's really funny is I told him, well, you might as well get that because you can once we can set up all your houses wherever we end up uh, you can put that next to your coffin factory that he bought on sale from Menards so um, and I wasn't even with him when he bought that so I didn't make him buy it but uh, apparently my little Halloween stuff has started to rub off on him um, so I'm gonna go through this huge pile of books all over so I did find, I started in like the self-help section and found a bunch of books I will probably give to clients eventually. Um, this one is a copy of Move My, Who Moved My Cheese. Um, it's a story about trying to accept change. Um, I know um, Jennifer Costco introduced me to this book when she was a counselor at Great Lakes with me. Um, and it's actually a really good book. And what's really funny is in this someone has a bookmark literally for this and has a piece of cheese on it um, but um, so we're going to start a huge pile on the floor and then figure out how to put things away um, first time I found an Al-Anon works book um, Al-Anon for those of you who don't know is for friends and family of people who are alcoholics um, to help you uh, deal with the fact that you may have been enabling their a disease or you know to deal with any feelings of guilt or shame you may have had dealing with their addiction because addiction doesn't just affect the person having the addiction um, so I thought that was cool um, and as always usually with these books even though it's anonymous sometimes there's a name inside but it does look like someone actually started to read it because there's like highlights and responses so um, thought that was cool I found um, one of the Hazelton meditation books you know each day a new beginning I love these things um, and just to see May 2nd so the quote is one must be leery of words because they turn into cages and then there's a long paragraph and then the little insight for the day is to catch myself each time I insult myself will be a challenge but one worth taking on and is one I can win so, you know, they're just little inspirational things for your day. Um, this one's geared toward just daily meditations for women, although it is a Hazelton, so I assume they mean women in recovery. And then I found a book I've never found before, Serenity, A Companion for the 12-Step Recovery, which it's complete with New Testament Psalms and Proverbs. So it's really for someone who really wants to use the Bible in their recovery, um, which I'm sure I'll have one client in the next year that will really enjoy this so again even when I was laid off both times in last year I still bought those books even when I wasn't technically a counselor I just couldn't stop buying them um, 
Here's another recovery book. Twelve stupid things that mess up recovery. Um, I've never actually read this one before, but it looks kind of cute. And they list them out front. You know, it's kind of like, okay, you, you have your twelve step program. Well, these are the twelve things to watch out for. So I thought that was cute. Um, I picked up a uh, Kathy Reich Flash and Bones. Um, you know, because it's a uh, Bones Temperance Brennan uh, TV show. I kind of like that, so I thought I'd probably enjoy this book. I do know from when my mom was reading them that I should be aware that Temperance is usually much older than in the show in these books. Um, then a few of these just won on titles. I barely even read the back um, since I had my dad patiently and wait, waiting me to get through all these books. Um, a Dog in a Hat, an American bike racer story of mud, drugs, blood, betrayal, and beauty in Belgium. So I think I might actually try to read this, and I definitely have a few friends who like biking that might get this after I've been reading it. Um, then another one that won on titles alone, and great imagery on the cover. Um, Last Mountain Dancer, Hard Earned Lessons in Love, Loss, and Honky Tonk Outlaw Life. And you can just see that the cover kind of screams, read me in some way. Uh, got a UFO on it. There was a UFO on the side of the graveyard. That caught my eye. I tend to like the stories that, you know, um, I'm very into like Eric Larson's work, you know, where it's based on a true story and trying to reconstruct it in a way that, you know, is easy for everyone to comprehend. Um, okay, let's see. I ended up with three Dean Koontz that are all related. They're all Frankenstein. I've never, I like Dean Koontz as a writer and I've never seen this. Now, first I found part two in a bin and I was like, well, I'm not going to get it if there's only part two. But like way across in this other room, parts one and three were together. So I went back and still found the other one, so that was good. I hope there's only three in the series. Because who knows if I'd ever find book four if there wasn't one. But if nothing else, um, I do tend to really like Dean Kuntz as a horror novelist. So hopefully we'll see what this means. You know, book one's The Prodigal Son, book two's City of Night, and book three is Dead and Alive. So I have that. Then I have this one, which kind of goes off like the Eric Larson type of title. The Firecracker Boys, H-Bombs, Eskimos, and the Roots of the Environmental Movement. So I kind of do usually grab things, if, especially if it's a bag sale, that have titles like a title and then like the sub thing with three things in it. They tend to be books written in a non-fictional manner but written as fiction. Um, so that, you know, some people even go crazy with like... Um, Larry Millette does some um, Sherlock Holmes ones, and he'll actually cite material he's used in the book. <laughs> you know, but, okay. Try not to have a huge pile of stuff. Alright, so, I tried to find the worst ones of sheet music in the pile that looked like they were fraying pretty bad already. Because I had someone request for my tile coasters to maybe try sheet music on there. Um, I think I'll try this page, but I kind of like the images on the front of this one to try and use, especially that captain and ship. I think that would be a cool tile, and that might make a cool tile. And got some Henry Machini sheet music for charade. So we'll see how those tiles turn out. Just grabbed a few that looked in rough shape because I don't want to destroy something that's actually in good shape. Um, Grab this so I had something that felt like comic book for free comic book day. Um, but the Boondocks is um, on Adult Swim. At least it used to be. I'm pretty sure it's still running. But um, but I I liked watching it the first season it was on. I just never caught the seasons after that. But looks pretty interesting already. So that's going to be my replacement comic book for today. Um, the next two I got so I can tear them apart um, to do tile coasters and such. Um, I actually used a similar book that has some of the same photos in it. 
This must have been um, another edition the year after. Um, but, like, I'm pretty sure I made a tile of this picture and the horse picture. But I don't remember the subway car picture. So it's like it may have been resubmitted another year or... This just says, uh, winning pictures, 100 ideas for outstanding photos. But I know I got some really cool tiles off it. I, again, I know for sure I did the lighthouse, but there are definitely some that weren't in the first one. But a lot of them are the same. But I'll still work for making more tiles. And then ugh, I got this communication design annual, which this is the only way to go if you're, like, going to scrapbook things um, and you want lots of material real quickly get them in a bag sale because if you don't mind destroying this book because it's a lot of advertising there are so many images in one of these that is ridiculous and let's see see so like okay violin I could use for a musical one or I could collage it with some others and just some really random images you get in here too I think I saw like a Spider-Man or something in here too. So it's just like a sampling of all art stuff and what artists are in right now or at least when the book was published and things to inspire and that. So you get some pretty interesting images overall. So I end up finding a lot of stuff in books like these for my uh, upcycling projects, my tile coasters, and um, depending on the size of the image, even like my Scrabble tile pendants. So that will come in handy. And again, all these books, two dollars, because we got them all fit in one bag. Of course, that's the reason to take my OCD dad. He doesn't like to look through all the books, but he will organize all your books in the bag, so you only need one bag instead of two. Alright, so I grabbed this, um, the worst case scenario survival handbook. I think what I'll end up doing is having it set aside for a possible gag gift or um, for a mystery trade box or something. Um, some of these I did grab on mystery trade box. Like, I have the whole Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, but the restaurant end of the universe is one of my favorite parts, mainly because it has the bovine that wants to serve itself. Um, but I thought for sure it might be good in a mystery trade box or somewhere. Alright, and I grabbed a Robert P. Parker, part of the Jesse Stone series. I've actually only watched the movies with Tom Selleck, so I thought, well, for nickels or pennies, I can try and read one, and actually someone left their bookmark in this one. So this one is Stranger in Paradise. And this one I picked up just because I absolutely loved the cover. Um... It's a, obviously a sci-fi inspired one, and I don't know, I might try to read it, um, but otherwise it might just end up in a mystery trade box or to someone I know who really likes sci-fi aliens and that. But it, the image was just so good, but it is such a well-bound book that I'm not going to tear it off just to use the image on something. I, I tend to try and get the books in the rougher shape for that. So then this one look just looked really good um whispers underground it says for the bottom the perfect blend of csi and harry potter and i just was inspired by that going i want to know how you put harry potter into csi but it sounded pretty good and um it begins with a dead body at the far end of baker street tube station tunnel all that remains of an american exchange student james gallagher and the victim his wealthy, politically powerful family is understandably eager to get the bomb of a gruesome murder. Wow, run on sentence. But um, Baker Street kind of intrigued me as well, because, and obviously might be set in London near Baker Street, maybe a Sherlock Holmes reference in there somewhere. Okay, and then I think this pile is mostly kids-inspired books. Um, so, again, I love Halloween. Um, and I don't know yet if I'm just going to keep the book, I mean, obviously someone started it because the very first thing is done, but there's eh, there's a couple things like crossword I could do, but I'll probably just uh, maybe scrapbook that image. It just looks really cool. 
Um, and then this, I just hope it holds together. I just couldn't resist um, Darby O'Gill and the Little People. I, I absolutely adore that movie, so um, I've actually never seen it in book form, so I'm actually really curious to see if it literally is just word for word the movie or not. Then another book, kids book. Now the cover is too thick to be a tile coaster, but I don't know. I kind of had to get something horse today because of the Kentucky Derby, but I mean, so, look at that. Clip Clap, he's so cute. They're, they're about the perfect size for tile coasters, but I don't know. I might just uh, leave it intact and give it to someone I know that likes horses. But, you know, the binding's kind of going, so I won't feel so bad if I scrapbook with it. But it just looked really cute. Um, this looked interesting just on the cover. Candy Freak uh, by Steve Allman. So, A Journey Through the Chocolate Underbelly of America. And so it's actually like not images the whole it's like an actual book of his exploration of chocolate. So that just looks really interesting to me. Um and back to more kid stuff. Um I had to rescue the Maurice uh Sedic book, if I'm saying that right. And you know, it's you know where the wild things are kind of characters. Just trying to see if I'm Okay, so this looks like it's inspired by Where the Wild Things Are, and it's a bunch of short stories contributed in here. I mean, there's one by Maurice Sadak, but there's others by other authors and poems and interesting images. So actually, I'm going to probably actually read this and then put it on the shelf with lots of kids' books that remind me of my childhood. Um, that um, I was a really bad kid when it came to my books. I wrote all over my books. Um, I really was bad with my books. All right, so look, I found Charlie Brown stuff. So he's your dog, Charlie Brown. Again, not the best condition, so we'll we'll see. Although it does seem to be holding together. Um, obviously, the kid was like me, but color there's a light coloring of pink in Snoopy. Um, and, yeah, they like to write in the crayon all over, but a few images got skipped, so, like, if I wanted to, I could scrap up some of the images. Yeah, that one didn't, I, I'm guessing the kid didn't like that one. Um, I'm not going to complain, though, because I was just as bad as a kid. I literally must have written on, like, every page I had. Um, so there's that one. And then also with Charlie Brown, I actually found the Charlie Brown Dictionary, um, which is actually a dictionary. So, um, angry. Lucy is angry. Lucy feels mean. Lucy has that feeling that she would like to fight with someone or make someone unhappy. And then she's got a frustrated look on her face. So, I mean, it's really something to teach kids uh, the meanings of words. Um but I'll probably scrapbook a lot out of here because it's not in the best condition and that is just screaming to be a tile. It is just screaming to be a coaster. Um, so, and then of course even with the smaller images I can put several of them together and make a collage tile. So, but, although some of these are really funny. Scarecrow. A scarecrow is made of sticks and dressed like a man. It is put in the field to scare the crows away. <laughs> I mean, they aren't trying to get that difficult on here, but it's some of them are kind of funny, you know. But lots of great images. Ooh, four more books to go. Um, this one I just couldn't resist because I'd never seen it before. Mistletoe Mayhem Horror Tales for the Holidays. Um, just the concept of horror tales. They're all short stories, so you know I'll probably read it. But it probably eventually may end up in a mystery trade box as well. Just because uh, I know I subscribe to a lot of YouTubers that are horror fans. And it just looked interesting. I didn't even, just by the cover and the title, I did not even look at what the titles of them were. The Sinister Inn 
the crown derby plate uh the spider so the night before christmas well that just makes you look at a nightmare before christmas uh and in the same lines spooky rhymes and riddles um one i just like the cover and the cat but uh little cute little things in here um ghost baby mama ghost and baby ghost played a game of peekaboo baby ghost looked up and cried i see through you i see through you you know it's just a little cute book um it's actually doing fairly well in its binding and again it's not something i probably would have bought if i wasn't in a bag sale but um this is pretty rough but it's a comic book version of the fox and the hound um and it's actually full color so that it's actually quite impressive how full of a color they are um i know i probably like this movie the fox and the hound because one of my friends growing up who is kind of like my brother was named todd so you know i always felt like he was part of the character and the very last item is bernard of scotland yard um, and I picked it up because someone is wearing a deer stalker cap and a bowler, so I assume this might be Sherlock Holmes related. And I just love Sherlock Holmes stuff, so I figured it would be worth a read just for the fun of it, even if they just end up passing it on to some kid later. Um, but it definitely looks a little inspired by that although yeah it's just those two characters really do look like they're supposed to be representative of Sherlock Holmes and John Watson um, none of the Bernard and Foster I guess are Sherlock and Watson in this but I just couldn't help myself um, <laughs> again um, Sherlock Holmes inspired and it actually is still in really good condition the only wears on the bottom but so obviously a good week for books rummage sailing um, and but again my my favorite thing that I found was the little Wookiee um, it made me smile and Star Wars days only a few days away um, the other funny thing I saw was Another sale had a Star Wars like Luke Skywalker figure, but right next to it was a Kentucky Derby item. And today's the Kentucky Derby, and I was like, "Well, that's really funny that you would have that for this weekend." But it was like the poster from 1935 on wood or something. But I didn't see any reason to buy it. I just thought it was funny. Um, so from Chewy and I, that was my rummage selling today. And sorry, this was a bit long.